on you. Let's head to Eugene Terrace. Greetings, Traveler and Paimon. Uh, what time is it? Are you okay, Ganyu? You were nodding off there. Didn't you sleep well last night? Uh, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Let's discuss the matter at hand. Since last time, I've been thinking a lot about the story Paimon told me. In essence, someone rescued a drowning man and performed some music. If that were all there was to it, it could have been many people human or adeptus. But the tune was allegedly so wonderful that the drowning man forgot about everything else, even his own impending death, and only came to his senses after being brought to shore. Perhaps there was an adeptal power at work in that music that he, as a mortal, could not perceive. Or perhaps he sensed a power surrounding him but lacked the words to describe it, not knowing where it came from. Either way, if this part of the story is true, then the rescuer has to have been an adeptus. You really think so? But this story is all the way from Fontaine. Isn't this a bit of a long shot? Also, Paimon's really curious about how people from Fontaine think this fairy lady looked. Ooh, like a crystal flies wings? That would be pretty cool. But... Paimon definitely can't imagine any of the Adepti looking like that. Actually, Gunyu, if you had to save a drowning person, how would you go about it? Huh? Me? Um... Well... I'd get them to the shore, and then I'd probably hide behind a tree and watch them for a while. Once I was sure that they were going to be okay, I'd slip away without a sound. Got it. So basically, Ganyu's the type of person who doesn't like taking credit for her good deeds. No, it's not like that. I'm just not very good at explaining things. And I also find it really awkward accepting other people's gratitude. Well... What if this adeptus in the story had a similar attitude? That would explain why she just left without saying a word. She was probably thinking something like, <clears throat> One was merely passing by and saw fit to address this egregious disruption to one's graceful zithering at once. You may keep your thanks to yourself. <laughs> that was actually a very good impression of Cloud Retainer, Paimon. As far as I'm aware, Cloud Retainer isn't the most musically gifted. Still, we can't completely rule her out just yet. Um, if we set off now, we could head to Mount Outsung and ask her about it. You'll be able to confirm either way if it's her, and I can... Um, I've been in Leo Harbor for so long now that I'm just not as familiar with the Adepti anymore. If there's anything we want to know about them... She's the best person to ask. Sounds great! And we're pretty close with Cloud Retainer by now, so we probably don't even need to bring her food this time, right? I've prepared a gift for her to mark the festival. Just in case. However... Um... Cloud Retainer spends most of her days studying mechanisms in her abode. She's on her own so much of the time that the moment she has someone to chat with, she just... Never mind. I promised I'd help Mr. Dvorak, and now that I've made the contract, I can't be having second thoughts.
Traveler? Paimon? Let's set off for Cloud Retainer's abode. Seems like this is a tough decision for Ganyu, but she's made up her mind now. Paimon gets why she'd be so anxious. Hmm. Okay, how about this? If Cloud Retainer tries to start telling stories about her again this year, we should pipe up and change the topic. Wait, did she leave already? Hey, Ganyu, wait up! Retainer is not here. Huh? Did we miss her? She doesn't like to travel, so in the past, it's always been the other Adepti who come to visit her during the festivals. Somehow Paimon doubts that anything could cause serious trouble for her. True. Now that I think about it, Cloud Retainer would be quite capable of taking care of anything on her own. There's no need to worry about her. Since she's not here, I guess the next step is to check all the other Adepti abodes, one by one. Uh-oh. Will it involve a lot more traveling? Hmm... Um... <gasps> Got it! Paimon has a great idea! Please go on, Paimon. Our goal here is to find the Adeptus that helped Dvorak's ancestor, right? We can't hear any music right now, but... If she's really as nice as the story suggests, she'd definitely come to help anyone who was drowning, right? Yes, I think that's fair to say. So, all we have to do is get the Traveler to pretend to fall into the water, and the Adeptus will come to the rescue! You know perfectly well that Paimon can't swim! Paimon would sink like a rock! <sighs> Just trust Paimon! The water's pretty deep over there! Quick, swim to the very center! What is going on? How do you feel right now? Uh... Shenha! And the Conqueror of Demons! Uh, why don't you say something? <sighs> Please don't make Paimon explain it! <laughs> okay, fine! Paimon will explain! We're looking for an Adeptus who's good at being a lifeguard and playing music. But if the Adepti aren't gonna stay home, then how are we supposed to find them? It wasn't me. Uh, yeah, so this Adeptus 
is most likely a woman. And I am not an adeptus, as you both already know, Traveler and Paimon. <sighs> okay, so this is Paimon's fault. No way Paimon would have suggested this idea if she'd known how awkward this was going to be. <sighs> Glad you're okay. As far as I know, the one you seek is no Yaksha. And one last thing. Your actions here caused others a great deal of worry. Do not repeat them again in the future. As ever, the conqueror of demons comes and goes, just like the wind. Right. I didn't dare to say a word just now. How's your training going, Shenhe? Have you made any plans for Lantern Rite? We could spend it together in Liyue Harbor if you'd like. Oh, I had planned to spend the festival with Master this year. <sighs> However... Oh, speaking of Cloud Retainer, when did you see her last? Earlier this morning. She set off for Mount Hulao at dawn. I noticed she was using an Adeptus art of some kind to protect a mechanism that looked like a boiler. Hmm, maybe it was a gift for Mountain Shaper. I did not inquire. Ugh... <sighs> So we just missed her. Please excuse me for a moment. I think I'll leave the gift in her abode. Sure. Thank you. It sounds like Ganyu and Shenha have gotten a lot closer recently. Yes. During the summer and winter, I continue to train with Master. In the other months of the year, I have been learning to adapt to human life in Liyue Harbor. Ganyu arranged accommodations for me in the city, and also recommended several work positions for me. But when I try to blend in by referring to her as Miss Ganyu or Lady Ganyu, like the others, she says I mustn't address her like that. Hmm. Sometimes I'm supposed to copy other people, sometimes I'm not. It's a little difficult to keep track of everything. Oh, is that what it is? Hm. Noted. So, you came looking for Master today because you wanted to ask her about the Mystery Adeptus. Is that right? Yep. Oh, speaking of that, have you ever heard any music while out training in the mountains? Music? What is that? Uh, it's... Uh... A kind of a happy or relaxing sound, or a, a nerve-wracking sound, or even a terrifying one. Okay, I'm done. I also left her a note so that she knows where to find us. We won't miss her again. Yay! That's really helpful, thanks! We were just talking about this thing called music. And based on Paimon's description, I do believe I hear it every day. Please follow me. Oh, really? Great, let's go! This is the place. I enjoy training here to the sound of music. Mm. 
faint sound of birdsong, the quiet murmur of the streams. <sighs> These are relaxing sounds. <sighs> are they not the music of which you speak? Oh, uh, Paimon wasn't quite done with the description. <laughs> okay, fine, it's all Paimon's fault. What we're looking for are not the sounds of nature, but melodies played on special instruments. Oh, and a melody is? Hey! Don't you patronize Paimon! <sighs> Let's get one thing straight. Paimon knows plenty of nursery rhymes, but Paimon does not sing on demand without payment. Hey, why don't you just sing that one melody Shen has heard before? It'll probably help her to understand what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, was that from the opera that Yunjin sang? Mm-hmm. That was a melody, and melodies can be called music. <sighs> it felt like I was transported back to the past. In my mind's eye, I could see the Zhao lanterns lighting up the night sky again. <sighs> We're all there, raising our glasses and drinking to our heart's content on the Jade Chamber. As I watched Yunjin's performance, I felt a warm sensation in my heart. <sighs> and as the drink reached my stomach, it went from warm to hot. When you hummed that melody just now, Feelings from a whole year ago came right back to me, as strong as they were on that day. Huh. So that's the power of music. Wow, Shenha. That was so deep! Music definitely has the power to bring up memories. It's like a time capsule with all the special moments from our life squished inside. What about you, Ganyu? Are there any melodies that have left a deep impression on you? Um... I don't remember if my parents ever sang any lullabies to me. I know some local folk songs. And a few other things come to mind, too. The songs of the sailors down at the docks. The little ditties that the vendors call out in front of their beloved shops. The tunes of folk artists performing on the streets. Yes, that's right. In the past, whenever I heard the sound of those tunes, I always felt that they were worlds apart from me. Nenny and Liyue probably view me as a non-human. And they are right, in the sense that I never could connect with humans' artistic expression and their sentiments. So I haven't been able to integrate into their community and be a part of their lives. At least, that's the view I held in the past. Only more recently did I start to realize that... The only barriers are ones that I have erected with my imagination. The way those melodies make me feel isn't all that different from other people after all. They're about mundane details of everyday existence. Life's ups and downs, joys and sorrows. Even though we come from different backgrounds and have different stories to tell, when it comes down to the most common things that we see and experience around us each day in the city, in that sense, we're all the same. You go, Ganyu! You're really making progress. You have loads of friends in Liyue Harbor when you think about it. Like... Um... Okay, maybe some are more like co-workers and bosses. But, at the very least, Kuching and Shenna are your friends now, right? Yes, I am. Technically speaking, we should refer to each other by the conventional forms of address used among fellow disciples. 
<sighs> but now that I know what constitutes a friendship, I do believe we are more friends than co-disciples. Thank you, everyone. Once the days are warmer, I would like to host you at my home in the city. Please invite Kuching as well. I've planted many types of flowers. <clears throat> I'm sure some of them will be to your taste. Ah, uh, you are too kind. I couldn't possibly. Nonsense. You are my friend. I have cultivated and cared for the flowers just as you taught me. Once you've seen them for yourself, I am sure you can advise me how to do an even better job next time. I will save some for decoration. We can feast on the rest. Then, thank you in advance. Wait, what is that saying again? If you insist? Do people say that? <sighs> I'm not completely sure either. It doesn't matter, okay? You got the point across. No need to split hairs. Um, Paimon's more concerned about your idea of a girl's night out. Eating flowers? Really? Does this have anything to do with you both being the disciples of that illuminated bird? Hm. Who dares refer to one not by one's adeptus title, but merely as that illuminated bird? Master. Our greetings, Cloud Retainer. Ah! There it is! The illuminated bird is landed! Double humph. Now she has the gall to use it rather than she, even after being chastised once already. Huh. Barely a moment has passed since we last met, and yet your impertinence has reached new heights. Very well. If you refuse to learn your lesson, one shall scold you no further. One has received your message from Ganyu. On the matter of the Adeptus you seek, one suspects to know their identity. Well, shall one lead the way? I still have to complete my training for today, so I will bid farewell to everyone here. Very well. Await my arrival at one's abode later this night. On this special occasion, you should indulge yourself with some savory dishes. If you want to release a Shao Lantern, come and find us any time. Thank you, everyone. Happy Lantern Rite to you, too. Ganyu is of course familiar with the name Guizhong, but have you ever heard of her? Guizhong is another name of Agentus, the god of dust. She was extroverted in nature, and adored social gatherings and inventions alike. Long ago, this region was yet a prosperous assembly. Gui Zhang often invited her friends to visit her home, reserving for us seats around the largest stone table. Seagazer would always bring out his latest treasure and place it upon the table. Ah, oh, he could be quite the braggart. Though usually a mild-mannered fellow, when it came to those collectibles he was so fond of, he always loved to show them off. 
remembers that name. So that's what Seagazer was like. He was an old friend and a former rival. One has many memories of him. Once he had brought out the treasure, it would predictably become the center of attention. Neither Guizhong nor one was content to let him just steal the spotlight. So we would then also present our proudest mechanical creations. As Adepti, we were each gifted in our own ways, and naturally proud of our accomplishments and our respective fields of expertise. As a result, one often quarreled with Seagazer. His treasures were not even of his own making. He just used his exploration skills to dig them out of the ground. How, pray tell, could he compare to me, when every single one of one's accomplishments were crafted by one's own hand? Cloud Retainer, you are getting competitive again. <clears throat> one digresses. Regardless, every time an argument occurred, Guizhong would come over to watch us during our mutual lambastics. On some occasions, she would join in, and on others, she'd take one of us by the limb and start uttering the most ridiculous nonsense. What kind of nonsense? No kind of nonsense were we spared. Sometimes she would brazenly opine, Ah, why argue between yourselves when neither of you could ever hope to beat me? Other times, she would make unsolicited suggestions, such as, Once you two are done arguing, let's go to the foot of the mountain and grill some meat. She always sought to make everyone happy, and one must say, she had quite the gift for it. No matter what nonsense she said, one never felt bothered or offended. It also helped that she never referred to one as that illuminated bird or ladybird. You! Come on! Get over yourself! <laughs> anyway, just as our impassioned arguments would reach the apex of acrimony, Marchosius would bring his delectable dishes to the table. Who would dare snub the stove god and his wondrous creations? At the sight of him, we would all immediately drop the argument and prepare the table for a night of feasting and drinking. <laughs> Back then, one was always bothered by how the cups Rex Lapis brought were always too square for one's taste. Can you see yourselves ever enjoying a drink from a square cup? Precisely. So, as you can see, even one as great as Rex Lapis was not immune to making the occasional blunder. Even one could never find fault with Marchosius' cooking. As we ate, Guizhong would continue to find topics for conversation, filling the table with humor and laughter. Each of those old fossils had their character flaws and points of obstinacy. So why was it that whenever we dined together, we always had a marvelous time? We would drink together from a spot high in the mountains, until the moon set and the sun rose, and only then would the banquet finally come to an end. Streetwood Rambler would often remain to admire the flowers with Guizhong before returning to her own abode. The glaze lilies were far more abundant back then. Entire fields of them would appear to the eye as a veritable sea of flowers. Streetwood Rambler? That would be Ping. You probably know her as Madam Ping. Oh, okay. Wait. A lovely story and everything, but didn't we come here to find that Adeptus from Mr. Dvorak's story? Or are you saying that it was Guizhong? Didn't she... um... already... um... Alas, 
Long has one avoided this place for precisely that reason. The sights here are a reminder of a time long gone, and evoke much sorrow. One should have guessed that you would disrupt one's poignant moment of mourning with your incessant questioning. <sighs> no matter, one will share the whole story with you now. In times gone by, one quarreled oft with Gui Zhang concerning mechanical principles. We each had our ideals, and neither would yield. Under the pretext of a social gathering, one invited the impartial Rex Lapis to judge the quality of our creations. But Rex Lapis declared that Gui Zhang's obscuro vulpus mechanism was superior. Hm. Though one was too proud to acknowledge it, in one's heart, one knew that Gui Zhang was indeed the superior talent in the mechanical arts. As for the story between Gui Zhang and Streetward Rambler, that begins with a certain bell. In Gui Zhang's opinion, while mechanisms were no substitute for human composers, they were yet capable of producing simple but fine melodies. But Streetward Rambler believed music to be an expression of the soul. An emotional enterprise that could never hope to be replicated by machinery. They argued endlessly, until one asked Rex Lapis to intercede. He confiscated the bell and designated it for ceremonial use. Thereafter, one would often find them convening in the mountains, discussing music, mechanics, and all the affairs of the mortal world. But these good times were not to last. War broke out between the gods, and soon engulfed the Guili Plains. Gui Zhang was overpowered by the enemy, and fell in battle. When Streetwood Rambler and I arrived at the scene at long last, all that remained among the ruins was her lifeless body. After this, at Streetwood Rambler's request, Rex Lapis granted her the cleansing bell for safekeeping. To honor our friend's memory, one made a few finishing touches to her ballistic device. Many lantern rites have passed since then. Many greetings and goodbyes. Upon what do you gaze? The Gwaili Plains? No. It's... everything. We think of human life as like a lantern that's lit one minute and extinguished the next. But are we adepti so different? Perhaps as dust settles after a storm, we too must one day return to the world below. One has always been austere and private by nature, and has never relished socializing. One's dealings with Gui Zhang were born out of discussions on the discipline of mechanics. What? You have loads of friends! And you seem pretty chatty! Just because one is not ignorant of social graces does not mean one is fond of them. One is perfectly capable of partaking in conversation despite being introverted. But in the end, one is nothing like Streetward Rambler. She is dauntless but thoughtful, not to mention eloquent and wise. Moreover, her friendship with Gui Zhang was far greater than one's own. Back when they were rivals, they would often compete against one another in the realm of musical composition. That cleansing bell was one of Gui Zhang's proudest works, having the ability to both compose and perform. Weird. Didn't Madame Ping say she pestered an old friend for that bell? And she also said something about being a vain beauty when she was young or something. Streetward Rambler. A vain beauty. <laughs> My foot. That bell has a sad history. Clearly, she refrained from sharing with you the truth of its origins since the right time had not yet come. 
As for her old friend, who else could it be? As soon as Streetward Rambler heard that a certain Zhang Li wished to borrow the bell, she realized that the man was none other than Rex Lapis, and that he had made an enormous decision. After all, we all have known each other for several millennia. Some things between us are implicitly understood. Whoa! So they were talking in secret code? Oh, Paimon did not see that one coming. Hm. Enough of your intrusions. Where was one up to? Ah, yes. One remembers now. The cleansing bell is powered by a mechanical art, and can be used to great effect as an accompanying instrument. After the passing of its creator, it was used on numerous occasions during rites of parting. But Streetward Rambler did not acquire it from Rex Lapis for the purpose of producing further funerary tunes. No. Each time she rang it, it was to play the tune that Gui Zhang composed on it. The two once clashed over their beliefs about the meaning of music. Who would have thought that with Gui Zhang's passing and Streetward Rambler's mourning, two tunes composed in discord would eventually become one harmonious composition? <sighs> Once upon a time, Streetwood Rambler also loved gatherings, liquor, and music. But after Gui Zhang passed, she preferred her own company. She could often be found sitting alone at a mountain summit, contemplating and reminiscing with her zither. The music would go from mournful to soothing to impassioned. Many years passed before she finally composed a melody to her satisfaction. In celebration, she played the tune to the clouds. Regrettably, one has only ever heard her play that tune once. Which brings one back to the matter you've been investigating. Perhaps it was during that performance that the ancestor of your Fontaine friend fell into the water and was saved by Streetwood Rambler. But, if she was so happy with the melody, why would she only play it once? One was also greatly perplexed by this. After suppressing one's curiosity for a long while, one finally approached her and asked why she would retire the tune after having spent so long on it. In response, she said, Though the strings that played that melody survive, the one who inspired it is gone. Tell me, Cloud Retainer, when the one attuned to my soul is no longer here, who else could hope to understand this tune? Aww, poor Madame Ping. I just remember being taken care of by you when I was young. Once the Archon War came to an end, I stayed behind in Liyue Harbor to honor my contract. Although I met Gui Zhang a few times, I never knew anything of this particular story. Gui Zhang was quite the visionary, but tragically passed before her time. Her manuscripts still lie unfinished in the realm of clouds. The blank pages give one cause for contemplation on what might have been. Had you not decided to search for that mystery Adeptus, Perhaps these stories, too, would have been lost to the sands of time. As of now, you know the truth. That the Adeptus who rescued the drowning man was none other than Streetwood Rambler. Do you intend to discuss this with her? Do you mean... Ping might find the topic too distressing? Precisely. The passing of our old friend is a heavy topic that both of us are usually careful to avoid. If I may be so bold, Cloud Retainer, 
Could it be that this is just your own personal opinion? Oh? How so? I've been in Leo Harbor for quite a long time now, and I've witnessed many farewells along the way. So I, too, am well acquainted with the pain of the passing of a loved one. But this doesn't bring the city or its people to a standstill. They have to keep moving forward. Someone as perceptive and wise as Ping will surely have come to understand and embrace this. Though these immortal mountains have lost an Adeptus, the harbor of mortals has gained a wise elder. No loss can ever be undone, but there is always much that can still be gained. Ping has helped countless people, and will guide many others in the years to come. And all to whom she extends a helping hand become her friends. People she can admire flowers and discuss music with. Though it is heartbreaking to lose a kindred spirit, life goes on because there are new friends waiting for you further down the road. We even asked Madame Ping what she thought about adding a music festival to this year's Lantern Ride. Oh, when we get back, why don't we just ask her if she'd like to perform? Maybe we can even get her up on stage. <laughs> you youngsters and your imaginations. Why don't you come with us? It's been a long time since you last spoke with Ping, and Leo Harbor is always decorated so beautifully during the festival period. Is not every lantern rite the same in this regard? Were there ever anything new to discuss, one in Ping could meet any day of the year. I disagree. Each new day and each new year is different from those that have come before. How long will you simply let them pass you by? Hmm. The edibles she brought this time were indeed quite delectable. Very well. Then one will be off. If the other old fossils have sneaked away into the city to amuse themselves, one shall soon find out. All right. We should be getting back to the harbor as well. We don't want to keep her waiting. <sighs> Once the Gwaili assembly, now the Gwaili plains. Say, if we planted flowers there and cared for them carefully enough, do you think that one day we'd be able to recreate the Sea of Glaze Lilies? Allow one to take back one's praise from a moment prior. You are still far too given to flights of fancy, child. What? Cloud Retainer? You were still listening? One observed that you were making no effort to leave, and returned to chasten and hasten you. This time, one is departing in earnest. Ping? And Cloud Retainer? It appears you made haste after all. One arrived but moments before you. Oh! Bless my soul. To what do I owe the honor? How nice of you all to come and visit me. Miss Illuminated Bird, haven't you said anything yet? Said what, precisely? And why should one be tasked with saying it? You're the one who's known Madam Ping the longest. Uh, yeah. Streetward. 
Welcome! Or rather, presumably, you would prefer to be addressed as Ping? Oh, Cloud Retainer, you are uncommonly polite today. One, uh... uh hmm. Given that Lantern Rite is almost upon us, the weather in the city is most pleasant, and a sweet floral fragrance lingers in the air. Ahem. Ganyu, please continue from here. Huh? Uh, all right? So, this all started because we were trying to help Mr. Dvorak find the Adeptus who saved his ancestor's life. Cloud Retainer informed us that the one who played that melody and rescued the drowning man was none other than yourself. Ah, oh, let me think. Yes, I do believe I recall that encounter. Uh. What a long time ago that was. I'm surprised that you still remember it. Even more astonishing, perhaps, is the fact that this story has survived this long at all, when mortal lives are so very brief. <laughs> it appears that she has proven herself right once again. Who's she? We like to call her Guizhong. From the look in Cloud Retainer's eyes, I sense that she has already told you all about her. <sighs> Albeit reluctantly, one might add. Oh, there is no harm done. After all, Lantern Rite's very purpose is to commemorate the heroes who gave their lives for Liu Wei. Although Gui Zhong did not live to see the splendid sights of today, she was as much a hero as any other. Uh, so... How has she proven herself right again, exactly? Once upon a time, she said to me that humans were a weak form of life that she wished to protect with her wisdom. But as she interacted more and more with them, her opinions on them began to change. She marveled at the beautiful complexity of their spirits, the sheer splendor of all they could accomplish through their hard work and intelligence. She told us that to underestimate human potential would be to make a grave mistake. With the smallest amount of guidance, enormous power can be unleashed in them. And a human who has reached their full potential may well be her equal. Someone who could have as much to teach an Adeptus as to learn from them. <laughs> she always had a way with words. That her mechanical accomplishments were judged superior to one's own was, one suspects, in large part due to her sheer eloquence. Speaking of mechanics, Cloud Retainer, do you still remember that potted plant mechanism? The one that the two of you gave me as a gift? Of course. Guizhong and one both put an immense amount of effort into that gift. It would be no overstatement to call it a testament to each of our individual technical genius. As Guizhong once said, it takes every blade of grass and every flower to make a homeland. When I see the sight of Liyue Harbor before us today, I am reminded of this. Madam Ping looks very emotional right now. <sighs> of all of us, it was Gui Zhong who was the fondest of these grand and exciting occasions. Huh. <laughs> If she were still with us, I'm quite sure she would still be trying to best Cloud Retainer's finest works at every opportunity. Liyue Harbor is always filled with the sound of music at this time of the year. If she were here, one is certain that she would seek you out to discuss and debate the virtues of various melodies. Oh yeah! Music! We've been dying to ask! What was the melody that 
you played back then. Oh, also, with you being such a music expert and all, why don't you join the concert as a performer? I can make arrangements right away. Oh, as much as I don't wish to dampen your enthusiasm, it's been a long time since I played this zither. My fingers don't have the dexterity they once did. And whenever I play that tune, it always reminds me of her. I start wondering what she would think of the changes I have made to her melody. There was a period of time whenever I started strumming, it almost felt like she was back again. Sitting right there on the stone stool next to me, chatting away. Skybracer and Seagazer too, looking just like they did in the old days. No matter how much time goes by, the moment that melody starts playing, it transports me right back to that time in my memory. So the past still weighs heavily on your heart? Oh, I would be lying to myself if I claimed to have completely moved on. But that is not to say that grief doesn't get easier with time. Despite the sadness, I have found many things that bring me joy in life. It is simply the nature of the world in which we live that even if one wished to mourn for an eternity, it would be a nigh-impossible feat. Just look at this potted plant. Isn't it stunning? It takes an honest and open mind to confront and conquer grief. You have indeed made progress. <laughs> be that as it may, I shall leave the lantern right stage to the youth of today. Well, if you're sure... Granny! <laughs> Whoa, what's everyone doing here? Did something bad happen? Ah, oh, and now we've spooked Yanfei. <laughs> no, no, everyone's just here to give me their regards for the holiday. Oh, that's wonderful, I'm glad. Well, in that case, happy lantern ride, everyone. Happy lantern ride. Oh, I... I just remembered that I have some, uh, work to do at your High Pavilion that I need to discuss with Yenfei. I haven't been able to find a chance until now. I will leave Mr. Dvorak in your capable hands. Cloud Retainer, Ping, we will be off for now. Huh? Does it have to be right now? Which case is this again? Hey, Ganyu! Hmm. <laughs> It seems Ganyu still has much to learn when it comes to the art of deception. What a pity. She has learned nothing of one's ability to carry a conversation. Since it's been so long, Cloud Retainer, why don't you stay? I'll make a cup of tea and we can chat a while. Gladly. This was one's intention as well. When you next see the Fontaine musician, Please give him my regards. I'd like to wish him the very best with the concert. You got it, Madam Ping! Thank you all. I think you've listened to enough of my nattering for one day. As for that melody, I will play it for you all another time. Goodness knows I need to practice it first. Wow! That'd be great! We'll look forward to it! <laughs> when that time comes, wherever her spirit may be among the countless grains of sand and specks of dust between the harbor and the mountains, perhaps she will look at the Leoa of today and steal a smile when she sees the prosperous land that it has become. This is a peaceful neighborhood. <laughs> Thank you. 
set all of this up. Welcome back. Did everything go well? Really, really well. We found the person Mr. Dvorak was looking for. Uh, are you serious? Uh, I see. So the melody my ancestor heard was an adeptus remembering her late friend? That certainly explains why it was such a powerful and poignant tune. Huh. That's a really interesting first reaction. Guess that comes with having a musical mind. I have to say, though, it, it's hard to believe that the fairy from the tale is now an elderly granny. Oh, Paimon knows exactly what you mean. Normally, Adepti don't age at all. But Streetward Rambler, or Madam Ping as we know her, probably only became old because it's what she wanted for herself. Madam Ping possesses vast knowledge and great wisdom. Whatever physical form she may decide to take, her mind and wits are as sharp as they come. Yep, Kuching summed it up perfectly. That's exactly what Paimon was trying to say. I think... Mm, yes. I must thank her in person. That can wait until after the concert, though. For now, I need to devote all my emotional energy to the performance. Ah, speaking of, Madame Ping wishes you all the best at the music festival. Paimon has a sneaking suspicion that she'll stay in her usual spot, but listen to the performances from afar. Wait, are you serious? Huh. Oh no, now I'm starting to get nervous. Okay, all right. Nope, another rehearsal is in order. Please excuse me, everyone. Mr. Dvorak? Oh, he's already gone. Paimon wasn't even finished telling him everything. Before we set off on our search with Ganyu, he asked us about what music means to people. After our recent adventure, Paimon thinks we have a lot more to say about that now. Please. Share your insights with me. Uh, well, we found out that music can be used for good, but also for bad. Um, it can make people happy and moved, but it can also be sad and bittersweet. And music is like a kind of memory written in people's hearts. It can put you in touch with feelings from a totally different time and place. <laughs> it sounds like you had an eventful trip. Don't worry, I'm sure Ganyu will fill me in on all the details shortly. Wait, does that mean you're gonna carry on working? Mm-hmm. Just a few things to wrap up. All the groundwork is done. As long as everyone enjoys the festival activities, all our efforts are worthwhile. Happy Lantern Rite to you as well. taken care of, right? Oh, no, wait. Paima feels like she's forgetting something. Ugh. What was it? Oh, it feels like it was a while ago. Ah, uh, shoot! Latent... Wait, no. Anyway, uh... Fancy bamboo shoots! Zhang Li said he wasn't in a hurry, so if we went now, there's probably still time, right? Anyway, even if we don't make it, it's not our fault. He could have totally picked them by himself. Ugh. Anyway, let's go check with him at Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. All right, let's take a break here. 
Oh wow, look who it is! Are you here to hang out with everyone's favorite funeral director? So you're just casually practicing your rapping skills at the entrance to your funeral parlor? In broad daylight? Uh, okay. <laughs> After everything we've been through, you don't see me for a hot minute, and you're back to being scared of your own shadow. We have all this open space, a clear view of the mountains behind and the sea in front. Not to mention we have several invisible audience members enthusiastically cheering us on. It's the perfect spot to rehearse. Invisible audience members? <laughs> Gotta say, it took me a few days to get used to Director Who's way of talking. <laughs> Shinyan was pretty spooked too when she first got here. Just like when she sees a frog, but a giant frog with sharp teeth. Come on, knock it off! What's wrong? I've never seen someone look so confused before. Well, don't worry, because Director Who's here to explain it all. <clears throat> There once was a Fontaine musician who went around town on a mission. He came door to door for his iridescence tour, looking for acts to audition. With my words, Shinyan's courts and Yunjin as our mentor, we'll take the stage by storm with flames roaring and the whole audience calling for more. For sure, the whole dance floor will be yelling encore, encore! Oh, now Paimon's rhyming along. Um, but when you say flames roaring, are you sure this will be safe? <laughs> oh, don't you worry about that. I'm pretty experienced on the stage, and I've already informed the Yuhong of all the pyrotechnics we're planning on using. Huh. Guess we'll just have to trust Shinyan on this one. Oh, Zhongli. He took one of those fancy meal boxes and set off for the mountains. Said he wanted to pay a visit to some old friends. It's a real pity that he couldn't be around for this. As well as being a true connoisseur of traditional art forms, he's able to appreciate Shinyan's performances too. Yeah, that's right. Matter of fact, he was the one who first invited me to perform here. To tell the truth though, I never thought I'd really find myself rehearsing here one day. <laughs> well, now you know. The Wangsheng Funeral Parlor is a great location. All of you are always welcome to come and hang out here, especially if you're in the mood to try something new. I can speak to that. Hu Tao is always full of fun surprises. And jump scares. Actually, Xinyan, I have some lyric ideas for your part. Do you want to go through them together? Oh, sure thing! I'm all ears! Oh, Traveler and Paimon, I believe Zhongli was heading to Mount Hulao, so make sure you're hiking up the right hill. When you see Zhongli, please pass on this message to him. It's up to him whether he wants to support us at the performance tonight, but I expect him to make time for the upcoming banquet we're planning. No excuses. You should join us, too. It'll be a riot. If there's one thing I've learned from being a funeral director, it's how to throw a party. Have you come from Liyue Harbor? How is the city nowadays? Everything's great! 
But you know, if you're so curious, you can always go and check it out for yourself. In fact, Moon Carver has been taking many walks on Mount Tianhang in recent times. I believe the sights of the city are quite familiar to him. Zhongli! Here you are! We've brought the bamboo shoots you wanted. Impeccable timing. Traditionally, bamboo shoot soup ought to be slow cooked for many hours on low heat. Using Adeptus Arts to hasten the process is something of a shortcut. Wait, that mechanism. Is that? Indeed. Cloud Retainer kindly lent me her supreme cuisine machine. Can we not just call it a cooking machine? Ugh, actually, never mind. She seems to take a lot of pride in her mechanical gizmos, so it's probably best if Paimon doesn't go changing the name willy-nilly. I trust that you found the answers you were seeking during your recent journey? Excellent. The past should be remembered, but not overly dwelt upon. Our journey should be seen as a means to take on more from the world around us. When the bamboo shoot soup is ready, I must insist that you try some for yourself. Oh, Zhongli! Who taught all this to tell you something? She said it's up to him whether he wants to support us at the performance tonight, but I expect him to make time for the upcoming banquet we're planning. No excuses! When she says performance, she must be in the Lantern Rite Music Festival. As for the banquet, uh... She didn't tell us anything more about that, but she invited us to come as well. As you can see, I have a prior engagement with two Adepti friends of mine tonight. Please, give Director Who my best wishes for the performance. As for the banquet, hmm, since the Director insists, far be it from a mere consultant like myself to refuse. Yay! Then we'll see you there? Absolutely. Rex Lapis, the bamboo shoot soup is ready. Thank you. I will examine it right away. Hmm. The appearance is exquisite, and the aroma rich and intense. The craftsmanship of this machine is commendable indeed. Since you came all this way, you should not leave empty-handed. Please, take some soup. It tastes most exquisite while still warm. to be here on the Iridescence Tour stage. All right, without further ado, I'm Shinyan. This is Hutao, <laughs> and this is a little something called... <laughs> the Blue <Blaine> Lilies! <laughs> I'm up here blazing trails through the midnight sky. You'll get burned! Hey! Woo! Yeah! Does anyone have any plans tomorrow? With another year behind us, I think we deserve a celebration of our own. Mm. My treat. Interested? The Tian Xuan footing the bill? <laughs> I can't miss out on that. <laughs>
May the year ahead be a blessed one. I believe it shall be. Master, the Shao Lanterns, I... Ha! Elementary! One shall fashion for you a Shao Lantern the likes of which the world has never seen. And you must take it to Liyue Harbor to display its magnificence for all.